Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is um, country before party. We've been looking at a number of seats. In fact, we've looked at all seats. And we have identified several where we think that if a UKIP candidate stands, he will prevent, or he or she will prevent, someone getting into the House of Commons who really is a committed Eurosceptic. And by that I don't mean someone who will just sign a better or flight agreement, but someone who in the House of Commons will begin to uh, hold debates and ask questions inside and outside the chamber, and who will, if necessary, defy the party whip. And all this in pursuit of the referendum on our membership of the European Union, which we were promised by the three failed old parties, and which has not been delivered. There are, of course, only three ways out of the European Union now. One of them is a binding referendum on the British people, uh, and that is the one we pursue. Uh, the second one is a vote in the House of Commons, 328 MPs voting to leave the European Union. I think that's unlikely in the foreseeable future. And the third is the most unpleasant of all, is if this very frightening and misguided project of European integration starts to break down and ends up in, in serious unrest and trouble. So we're going for the referendum. The, um, I'm happy to take questions on it. Uh, there are um, six, I'm afraid, conservative candidates we've identified. Where Were we to stand, we would uh, probably keep them out. However, who knows? I mean, a long time to go in this campaign. And there is, I'm glad to say, one Labour candidate. Um, and I'm afraid I haven't been able to identify a Lib Dem. If anyone can find one, uh, who we could make the difference to, uh, I'm sure we could accommodate him before the end of the campaign. Um, now, we're not just standing aside. Uh, what we're going to do is rather different. We are actually going to actively campaign for um, all, all, these, all these candidates. Um, and on one, in one uh, candidate, the Labour candidate um, in, in, in Stroud, uh, David Drew, we're particularly anxious to get him back. And our candidate there has actually put in his election address that although he wants his vote, he asks, he asks the voters to vote for David Drew if possible. And he's committed your skeptic, you'll fight to get him, he gets into the Commons. Now, it must be clear that none of these people have actually asked for our help, but we know where they stand. We know where Philip Davis stands in, in, in Shipley, obviously Douglas Carswell, and Clacton, Philip Hollibone. We know where they stand because of their record in the Commons. Um, Bob Spink in Castle Point, independent. Uh, we'll be helping him too. And I think it is possible that there are some other um, seats here where, uh, before the end of the campaign, our candidates may, uh, who are, we've got candidates, may say, uh, um, if, if we possibly can, uh, vote uh, for, for most of the Conservative um, candidates. Uh, but if you can't hold your nose and vote Conservative, um, then by all means vote for me, uh, because that will draw the votes off from the other party. Uh, as I say, that formula is already adopted uh, against the Labour candidate in, in, in Stroud. As, as I say, I'm, I'm happy to take questions on it, um, and uh, we, think, we think this is different. I don't think it's ever been done before. We've been in touch with the Electoral Commission. We will be putting bull billboards up in all these constituencies and saying UKIP says vote for whoever it is. And I, I, we think that that will make a difference if there. The danger of the thing, of course, is that there are quite a lot of Conservatives, and we may uh, give Cameron uh, the working majority which he needs to carry on for five years. That's the danger of the strategy, and that, as you know, we think is a disaster because it's ruled out a referendum on our EU membership. And five more years of integration into the European Union, uh, armed with its legal personality and the Treaty of Lisbon and supported by the court, is, as I said before, the end of this country as we've known it, and we must do everything we can to avoid it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Malcolm. Uh, now allow me to introduce to you our former leader, Nigel Farage, a person who we believe will be soon to be the next Buckingham MP. He will talk to you about the main campaign theme, straight talking, something he's done for many years now. And it's something we believe has been lacking from the failed old parties. Nigel Farage. Well, good morning, everybody. We do believe in straight talking. And after one week of the general election campaign, I don't want to be rude about the other parties. <laughs> That's not my style. Mm. But it's no wonder that actually everybody is bored to death, because the first week was dominated by a debate about whether £6 billion went on employers' national insurance next year or not. 
So a big debate about six billion when the government next year is projected to spend 705 billion pounds. Frankly, the campaign so far has been a piddling irrelevancy, and it's becoming increasingly clear that the choice the British public are being offered here is not for a change of government, but for a change of management. And we think that when it comes to the economy, it really is time for some straight talking. Frankly, we're skinned. Absolutely skinned. And we need some massive cutbacks in the public sector. And that's why our manifesto suggests that in year one, we need to cut back by 50 billion pounds. Uh, we've, we've published a list of various quangos that we think do far more harm than good to this country that we'd like to see go. And we also point out that if we stop paying the European Union, 45 million pounds a day, well there's your first 16 billion pounds of it. And of course the second issue in the minds of the British public is immigration and the lack of border controls that we have. And again, there's no straight talking from Labour, Lib Dem or Conservative. They actually don't want the British public to know that what they signed us up to in 2004 was a total open door to the whole of Eastern Europe. And of course beyond that, because when the Romanian president grants a million passports to Moldova, which he did in December, that means that those one million people also have access to this country. What they're also bearing, of course, is the fact that they all want Turkey to join the European Union, which would give free movement to 75 million Turks if they wanted to come to this country. So the real argument is this. We cannot have our own immigration and asylum policy if we remain members of this European Union. And I know that Mr Cameron, in about 45 minutes' time, will be telling you that the Conservatives will control non-EU uh, immigration into this country. Uh, but actually, even that, within the lifetime of the next Parliament, will go because Commissioner Frattini in Brussels has made it clear that the EU common immigration and asylum policy will be completed within the next two years. So not only will we have no control over those from Eastern Europe that come, we'll have no control over those from the rest of the world that come. So it is time for straight talking. And we want some straight talking about who governs Britain. The fact is that 75% of our laws are made somewhere else. And before I was in politics, I had a proper job, a real job, um, and I worked in Britain's biggest industry in financial services. And when I talked to my colleagues who were still there in the city, uh, they all make the point that it is now irrelevant, irrelevant to Britain's biggest business, whether Labour or the Conservatives win the next election, because all the regulations that are coming onto the banking, insurance and broking industries will come from new, three new regulatory authorities set up in Brussels. So we want some straight talking in this. And I intend myself, as one of our 550 candidates that are going into this campaign, to engage in some straight talking in the Buckingham constituency against the Speaker. Um, I know it's said that I'm breaking some historic convention well, everybody seems to have forgotten that as recently as 1987, when Bernard Wetherill was Speaker, he was opposed by the Liberal Party and by the Labour Party. So there is no great convention. The fact that people think there is one sums up what a nice, cosy little consensus Westminster politics has become. Now, I'm sure there are many of you here who will think, well, it's going to be very tough for you to get. And I accept that this is a first-past-the-post election and that it's not easy. But can I please remind all of you Ever since this party was born, we were told, you've got no chance, it won't go anywhere. But on the last national test of opinion, which was the European elections on June the 4th last year, little UKIP came second, beating the Liberal Democrats and beating the Labour Party. I have a sense that out there in the country, despite the difficulties of this electoral system, we are doing very much better in this general election than we ever have before. Don't completely write us off. Thank you. To find out more about who we are and what we stand for, go to the UK Independence Party website at www.ukip.org.